This is Lindsay Nagel, business person extraordinaire. Her resume includes time as a TV network executive, marketer in the toys industry, talk show producer, political activist, skincare consultant, doomsday prepper, replacement smithers, master thief, and various other business ventures. As for her personal life, well, we don't talk about her personal life. Let's just say she's on the hunt for men. This is the history of Lindsay Nagel. I am so happy about this nomination because I have always wanted to do The Simpsons Histories. She's such an enigma, that Lindsay Nagel. I've already covered a multi-job character like Gil, but this is someone who is actually successful at what she does. She's a mover and shaker. She sets entire episodes into motion. A surprisingly influential character. And yet, I don't feel like Simpsons fans really care about her all that much. Is Lindsay Nagel a case of a latecomer added to an increasingly bloated cast? Or did she bring something fresh and new to the middle era? Let's go back to the beginning to find out. Lindsay Nagel's first appearance was in Season 8's The Itchy and Scratchy and Poochie Show. Or was it? She has one of the weirder introductions in Simpsons histories, as we get more of a Lindsay Nagel prototype before the real version. This network executive is voiced by Tress McNeil, sounds exactly like her, and has many of her businessy personality mannerisms. The major stumbling block, of course, is the character design. It's like Lindsay Nagel did the reverse Barney, where she started out as a brunette and switched to blonde. Whether or not you think this is actually Lindsay, you can see why the writers were keen to bring her back. Her idiotic business talk is so fun to listen to. Her excitedly saying, oh god yes, to Poochie being proactive, and saying he gets busy consistently and thoroughly. Oh, and how she wants to rostify him by 10%. After that memorable showing, this network executive returned the following year, in Girly Edition. It's actually her fault why this episode even happens, with her idea for a kids' news program. Once again, she crushes it in this early appearance, all her buzzword-laden banter with Lisa. I love so much how she insists, I didn't say Zork, and calls Lisa Marianne later. She's so perfect as this impersonal network drone. The only thing we really learn about her, personally, is that she can't cry because of a botched facelift. In Season 10's They Saved Lisa's Brain, we finally get her real introduction. The character model is updated, and she introduces herself as Lindsay Nagel. She works for Advanced Capital Ventures, where they create synergy and books about how to cheat at bridge. After two extremely business-driven appearances, the writers are fleshing out her personality as a Mensa card-carrying intellectual. She chastises comic book guy for looking down her blouse, creates a jury duty comic book, and wants to build a theater for shadow puppets. I'm betting what happened was the writers realized that they didn't have any women in the Mensa group at first, so they created Lindsay from the network executive to fill out the cast. It was a good call. Now that she's been properly established, she would pop up regularly throughout the rest of the Mike Scully years. In Grift of the Magi, she is one of the market researchers behind Funzo, firing and rehiring Gary Coleman, and giving Bart and Lisa a free Funzo after admitting to screwing them over. In Alone Again Natura Diddly, she goes on a date with Ned Flanders. She makes $200,000 per year, graduated from Wharton, and describes herself as poised, articulate, sophisticated, confident, and highly sexual. She is the perfect comedic foil for Ned, this fast-moving business professional who knows exactly what she wants. In Days of Wine and Doses, she reveals she is a recovering alcoholic. She is running the AA meeting to stay sober and to network. She will not, however, put up with Gil's Amway presentation. In A Tale of Two Springfields, we get Lindsay's first town hall presentation. Now she's working for the phone company and condescendingly describes their fears as groundless and moronic. In Homer vs. Dignity, she's become a financial panther, telling Homer he will need to declare bankruptcy several times and shows him the simulation. Her banter with Homer in this episode is so damn good. How she characterizes him as being too stupid to stick to a budget. You need more money. 
Then, how she doesn't fall for his deaf mute ploy, so he throws cards at her and runs. Lindsay returned to her network executive roots in Day of the Jackanapes. She gives idiotic, contradictory ideas like edgy cute, and brazenly gives notes while on live TV. Can you get jiggy with something? Also, I think Mr. Teeny kills her at the end of the episode. Or at least, we find out she's a Terminator. I don't know what to make of this appearance. It's like a combination of Lindsay and her original prototype. In season 13, when Al Jean took over as showrunner, it's business as usual for Ms. Nagel. Now she's teaming up with Mr. Burns to commercialize the church. Now she's back to television, this time as a daytime talk show producer. When Carl asks her what she's doing here, she briskly replies, I'm an alcoholic. I guess either Lindsay fell off the wagon, or AA didn't have good enough networking. The writers seem to like this jarring and abrupt alcoholism confession, as they went back to the well and blame it on Lisa. Now she's working as a customer service rep for a phone company. When Marge asks why Lindsay keeps changing jobs, she matter-of-factly states that she's a sexual predator, and then quickly snaps back to business as usual. Also, Homer threatens to cut off her ponytail. I know some folks dislike this Lindsay Nagel joke, but I admit it always gets a laugh out of me because it is so damn jarring and dark. Only Lindsay could deliver this line. It's kind of a throwaway line and is never revisited, but I admit this detail definitely makes me give her the side eye at some of her later appearances. Like here's one from Large Marge, where she and Cookie are scoping out the guys at a Habitat for Humanity build. You stay away from Homer, Lindsay. Here she is approaching him to do a commercial for an erectile dysfunction drug. In Margical History Tour, she even gets to marry Homer, playing Anne Boleyn during the Henry VIII segment. It does not end well for her. Actually, I'm not even 100% sure this is Lindsay. I'm gonna assume it is, since Tress is doing her voice here, but it's hard to be sure. I should also point out that she did other stuff during this era besides cruising for guys. She sells Homer a phone and tries hawking this weird skincare product to Marge. And most notably, she gets political in season 15's Marge vs. Singles, Seniors, Childless Couples, and Teens and Gays. This is the closest thing we get to a Lindsay Nagel spotlight, given that she acts as the main antagonist of the story. She's the one driving the action, pushing this anti-family philosophy to Springfield. Children are our future. Today belongs to me. This episode really does highlight what a different world Lindsay lives in than the Simpson family. It's like there's this whole other world of Springfield we know very little about. One that involves dating Sideshow Mel. After this point, clearly the writers decided that she is overexposed and has dominated the show too much. Because from season 16 through 26, we can enter what can only be described as the Lindsay Nagel Dark Age. I don't know if they were tired of doing business plots so much, or if they would rather bring in one-off characters to kickstart these kinds of stories. Like, the only corporate shill Lindsay we got was when she was spokesperson for the Scammer and Z-Dog company, saying nutrition is none of our business. She was a network executive a couple more times, firing Kent Brockman in one episode, and letting Lisa fill in for Krusty in another. It's worth noting that Lisa's performance brings a tear to Lindsay's eye, even though this character once claimed she couldn't cry. This might be the smoking gun for all the female network executive truthers out there. So yeah, bad news for all the girl boss Lindsay fans out there. This was not the era for that. The good news? Well, we have some tea to spill about her personal life. It turns out, Lindsay has quite the eclectic taste in men, as we see in many different episodes during this era. At Moe's new British pub, she makes out with Judge Snyder, as he bangs his gavel repeatedly. When Kirk goes to prison, she's one of his love-struck fans, declaring, You've kidnapped my heart! She dances with fancy gentleman Willie. She was rather flirty with Krusty right here. She tries to hook up with the sea captain at a wedding reception. And she even hits on Mo, twice. Oh, Lindsay, have you no shame? Surely her lowest moment in the series. This was a Lindsay Nagel who would get her hair styled not to look professional at work, 
but for the airport piano bar, and so it'll look good in the morning. Oh, and let's not forget about Homer and Marge. When Marge is part of a bank robbery and fears for her life, she calls Homer and tells him he can remarry from anyone on their list from their bulletin board. And look who is at the top of their list. The following season, Homer walks in on Marge's book club and envisions everything going horribly wrong. But don't worry, his fantasy ends with Marge and Lindsay passionately making out. What the hell is going on? I thought this Simpsons Histories, we were going to get a story of a shady business person, like the Wolf of Wall Street. And instead, we got a tale of sex-crazed hookup culture, like the Wolf of Wall Street. Also, speaking of which, here she is trying to hook up with the Wolfman. Lindsay Nagel doesn't even stick to one political party. In season 18, she is at Republican Party headquarters trying to stop Kent Brockman. But just one season later, now she's at a meeting with the Democrats. Gosh, it's almost like these self-serving business types just float to whoever might be in power someday. Although maybe, deep down, Lindsay thinks the whole system is going to blow up anyway, as she was part of the Doomsday Preppers in Season 24. Either Lindsay is deeply cynical about where things are going, or she is the queen of covering bases. Even when society falls, Lindsay wins. So yeah, I think in terms of characterization, her work-life balance got a little out of whack in these middle years. Luckily, from season 27 onward, we got both sides of her personality more often. Sure, she's a slutty crayon at Halloween and is dating Otto, but she's also a competent professional, working as Smithers' replacement. Actually, maybe she's too confident, as she is quick to check on how the hounds are doing and demanding to speak to HR. In addition, she is still a prominent member of Springfield's Mensa chapter, this time participating in a musical number. On the entrepreneurial front, she is one of the investors on Springfield's Shark Tank knockoff, offering three hours of her work for 90% of Kirk and Milhouse's business. She helps Krusty buy Homer's beloved hot dog caboose stand, ready to jack up prices immediately. Wow, the Simpsons predicted the 2024 fast food industry. Also, she seems to be working for Yale in one episode. Mr. Burns is horrified by their push for inclusivity and not simply catering to a bunch of rich, shadowy creeps. In another episode, she privatizes Springfield Elementary's detention, with Lisa ultimately leading a revolt against her. When Marge opens her New Age crystal shop, Murmur, Lindsay becomes her supplier. According to her business card, Lindsay does everything. This is the Lindsay that I had missed for the past few seasons. That she can just show up, get the story moving, maybe be a minor antagonist, and call it a day. She even started getting prominently featured in episodes again, like back in the season 15 days. In season 29, when Marge runs for mayor, Lindsay is right there to steer her candidacy. She says their strategy is to get to 51%, and then Marge can rule the place like a far-right nutjob if she so desires. Lindsay just wants to win. When Marge does win, her popularity tanks due to a series of faux pas. But Lindsay discovers the public loves Homer's bumbling. She suggests Marge should lean into this idiot husband angle and throw him under the bus. Hmm, don't know about this strategy. Lindsay is great at politics, but this is a pretty bad read on Marge. In season 32's Uncut Femmes, we get... Wait a minute. My notes say we get Lindsay Nagel backstory, but that can't be right. Wow, Sarah Wiggum and Lindsay Nagel lore in the same episode. What a time to be alive. So it turns out, both of them used to be master thieves in Shelbyville, and Lindsay went by the name Red back then. During Heist, she betrayed them, got them all pinched, and took the diamonds for herself. Now Sarah's crew is going to steal them back. This episode portrays Lindsay as a rich socialite who's going to a fancy gala and dating Rainier Wolfcastle. Very Anne Hathaway from Ocean's 8, for those who saw that one. In the end, she takes a comically long tumble down the stairs, gets set up with a bunch of stolen diamonds, and goes to prison. Once again, I am shocked that Lindsay got an origin story. I always assumed she just emerged from the business ooze one day. But I love that they went here. It does fit Lindsay's mercenary attitude. And finally, we have season 34's The King of Nice. 
Lindsay returns to her TV production roots, this time convincing Krusty to do an Ellen-like daytime talk show. And if you know anything about Ellen, you probably know where things went. Although this story put all the blame on Lindsay as the executive producer, Krusty is totally checked out and oblivious. Whereas Lindsay is constantly yelling at her PAs and making segment producers work long hours into the night. When the poor working conditions got leaked, she announces she will bully the staff until she finds the whistleblower. I really enjoy her dynamic with Marge in this one. She's the one who recognizes her true potential as a segment producer. But, typical for Lindsay, she gives mixed signals and changes her standards at every turn. You know, we women have to stick together in this business. But I also want you to never quite be sure where you stand with me and just have a general sense of unease about my intentions. Does that make sense? This kind of dynamic is perfect Lindsay Nagel. When I hear this kind of speech, I find myself wishing we got more of it over the years. Lindsay is the perfect outlet to make fun of this brand of manipulative, substance-free business speak. She's even better at this than Mr. Burns in some respects. Mr. Burns represents the old-school, high-level capitalist type. Like, they're still around, obviously. But these days, we often get these up-and-coming enterprising types. Maybe they're a cunning entrepreneur on the make, or they're a middle manager or executive that you have to deal with. I feel like we meet Lindsay Nagel's far more often than Mr. Burns's, so she brings an important new dimension to the cast. I remember in business class, I had to read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And when the very first habit was to be proactive, I immediately mentally checked out. Lindsay Nagel, you have ruined business speak forever. I think the key to Lindsay is that her scenes have to move fast. She's like a shark. She has to keep moving to survive. Her dialogue has to be snappy and abrupt. I like that we've seen more of her personal life, that when not working, she just wants a quick hookup, but it's more fun when getting scenes like this one, with the back and forth, instead of the simple LOL Lindsay slut stuff. Lindsay Nagel is an amazing comedic foil. Team her up with Homer, Marge, Lisa, or Mr. Burns, and you're gonna get some magic. I get the vibe that Lindsay isn't especially popular with Simpsons fans. She's kind of viewed as one of those folks who popped up when the show started getting stale. But I think that perception is unfair. A lot of her individual scenes, especially early on, are quite funny and memorable. All the way through the Scully era, there isn't a single bad Lindsay Nagel appearance, which is pretty dang impressive. Some fans say The Simpsons died around the time Lindsay started showing up more often, and while Lindsay Nagel may have been in the room, there's no way she was the killer. She was a great addition to the show. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Lindsay Nagel moments are and what kinds of roles you prefer her in. Also, please weigh in on the female network executive controversy. I'm still not sure if this counts as the same character. That tear duct evidence is overwhelming. Also, let me know who you'd like to see for the next Simpsons histories. I feel like we could go in a couple of different directions at this point. We could continue down this random job person route and talk about the blue haired lawyer or a squeaky voice teen. We could go down the entertainment route with Rainer Wolfcastle or Bumblebee Man. Or maybe I should buckle down and cover one of the heavy hitters. Let your voice be heard. As always, thanks for watching.